Namaskaram Sadhguru. I am Kavita uh, from Rajkot Gujarat from Aptak Media. We have a newspaper and channel. Uh, my question is, uh, I have a curiosity that whether God exists or not. Okay. <laughs> Please. See, uh, why this question about God is uh, this. Well, all of us, we came out of our mother's wombs and we looked around, so much creation. Initially, we thought it could be our mother who did all this. Well, she delivered you, but she can't deliver the planet. Then you look at your father, he doesn't look like he's capable of doing all this. Then you look around, is there somebody? Nobody looks like competent enough to create this whole creation. So the simple thing is, you will go and ask somebody, maybe your parents or elders, somebody, they will say, there is a big human being up there. In India, both but generally in the world, there's a big man up there who does all this. Because we're human, if we were all buffaloes, we would definitely think there is a big buffalo up there. Yes or no? Hello? If we were buffaloes, would we definitely think God must be a big buffalo or not? Maybe ten horns, not two. So, this is a childish explanation to a very complex reality that nobody has figured where it begins, where it ends. Where this cosmos begins, where it ends, neither the religious people nor the scientific community have figured out, isn't it? Both do not know. Now there is a human problem that we cannot admit we do not know something. We have to pretend we know. Because if you really look at this, in a cosmos that you do not know where it begins, where it ends, here we are sitting on a small mud ball which we call as planet Earth, and we are sitting and doing all this. Actually, you don't know, next moment this planet can fly off into the space and be destroyed. Possible? Hello? Possible? Possible. It's happened before, and it will happen at some time, maybe not in our time, but it'll happen somewhere, maybe a billion years later, such things will happen. So, how does a human being find some psychological balance? Somebody is holding my hand and spinning the planet all the time. This is believers, that God is there, He is spinning the planet, everything is going fine. There are some people who are going on the street with such a face, because they believe they are spinning the planet. I call them planet spinners, always full tension. They are only spinning the planet. So people who think God is spinning the planet, they are little, you know, air in the head. Those who think they are spinning the planet, they are full of suffering. Now, the reality is, you don't know, isn't it? Hmm? You don't know. Creation is so complex, you don't know. I do not know is the most tremendous thing in your life. Only if you see, I do not know, the longing to know, the seeking to know, and the possibility of knowing becomes a reality in your life. Whatever I do not know, I will believe. Something I will make up in my head and believe, or I will allow the culture to make it up, or I will may allow somebody else to make it up. Why can't we be sincere enough, straight enough to say, what we know, we know. What we do not know, we do not know. Is it all right? Hello? Is it all right not to know something? Actually, if you look at it carefully, you don't know a damn thing about this life. Hello? Even if you read all the libraries on the planet, still you don't know nothing about this universe and this space, isn't it? We know really nothing. We may know little transactional knowledge how to live in this world. But we really, when it comes to creation, we know nothing. So the thing is, everybody started looking up, like all the solutions are up there. Kavita, what do you think, the planet is round or flat? 
I'm asking you because there are people from Bangalore, they believe planet is flat. Huh? Wrong. But if you walk up and down here, it feels flat, isn't it? So it's a round planet. Is it stationary or spinning? Spinning. It's spinning and it's round. If you look up, you're always looking up in the wrong direction, isn't it? So you don't even know what is up. How the hell do you know who is up? You do not even know which is up, which is down. If you are in Australia, God means you look like this, is it? That would have been very nice if you thought soil is God, earth is God, you would have done, at least lived a little more sensibly. <laughs> now, uh, we go about believing things. Belief will give you confidence. That's the beauty about belief. It'll give you confidence but without clarity. Confidence without clarity is a great disaster on the planet. See, let's say, not you, you're a young woman, I don't want to say this. Let's say somebody doesn't have a clarity of vision, they can't see very clearly. They want to walk through this, but they're confident. What will happen? They will step on you and go. If they don't have clarity, at least if they hesitate, they can seek somebody's help, they can gently go. When you don't have clarity, you should not have confidence, isn't it? Hello? Confidence is not a replacement or a substitute for clarity. Clarity means you see things as they are, simple. If I ask you to walk up and down here now, without effort you will do it. But if you turn off all the lights and turn it this place into total darkness, if I ask you to walk, suddenly you will think of God. Hello? Daytime, you don't think of God. Night, if it becomes very dark, you think of God, isn't it? Because you're trying to build confidence. And I'm telling you, instead of working on clarity, bringing more and more clarity to yourself, you're building confidence. This confidence will naturally result in conflict. Maximum number of conflicts on the planet have happened one man's belief versus another man's belief. Not necessarily religious, some belief. I believe this, you believe that, we will fight. If both of us see, actually we do not know, let's look at it, what it is about, we may find at least marginal solution, isn't it? We may not find an ultimate solution, at least intermediate or incremental solutions we will find. So this is what spiritual process means. You realize that you do not know. Once you realize you do not know, genuinely, experientially, if you see, I do not know, after that, your intelligence cannot sleep anymore. Even if your body sleeps, this will be always on. Then we say, he's awakened. You know, the word awakened is used, what do you say in uh, Gujarati, huh? Jagrit, okay. So you have come awake. It means that your intelligence is awake, body needs to sleep, but rest need not sleep, it's always on. Once it's on, now if your intelligence is active and alive, you figure out more things or less things? More about life you will figure out because intelligence is not intellect. Intellect is operating out of knowledge. Intelligence is like a torchlight, it shows you what is there. So instead of turning on the lights, we are getting confidence. If there is darkness here, we should turn on the light. No, but we get confidence, we will tell one mantra, we'll tell one slogan and say, go like that. Well, we have been blundering like this for a long time. So you can make whatever conclusions you want. Whether you make the local culture as a basis of your conclusions, or you use your own imagination and make conclusions, or you use scriptures and make conclusions, the fact is you do not know, isn't it? But I'm telling you, I do not know 
is the most precious thing in your life. Because if you do not know, you're always looking. If you think you know, you're shut down. If you want to become Jagrat, awake, then you must see, genuinely see, I do not know, then you always will be awake. That's a good way to be when you're alive, when you're dead you can sleep. <laughs>